As we look around this world, we see lots of problems, and there are Christians and Muslims alike who just uh, know that we are living in the final days of human history. Does God have a final end time apocalyptic people? Yes, he does, and we'll talk about that next on Good News for Muslims. Welcome to the grand finale of a 13-part series dealing with Islam and Christianity, the Bible, the Quran, Muhammad, and Jesus. And this is it. And today we're going to talk about uh, identifying God's apocalyptic end-time people. So Shabazz, are you ready for the last program? I am. And this is it. Uh, okay. We look around the world today and uh, there's fires, terrible fires, uh, recently in California. Hurricanes, storms, floods, earthquakes, uh, violence, uh, sexual confusion and sexual excess, gender confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the list just goes on and on. Environmental decay, emotional rage, divisions in society, families are being torn apart. There's just so much going on. And there's so many of us. That as we look around and we see all these things, we just, we have this sense that time is running out. Amen. That these are the final days Amen. of Earth's history before the end of the world, whatever, you know, that means to different peoples. The Bible certainly does talk about the end of the world. So uh, why don't you give us just a quick overview, a recap of how uh, Muslims you know, what they think of when they think of the end times. What is the Islamic view? of the last days? Generally, the, uh, the, the Quran or the apocalyptic view of the last days is not even in the, in the Quran. The Quran doesn't say anything about it. Nothing. It's silent, completely silent. There is no prophecies about what's going to happen in the last days. Hmm. Only in the Hadith you find these. And, um, and almost all the Hadith agree on this one scenario of, of how the end time apocalyptic events will shape and take place and and I'm just going to go quickly through them sure. and share that with the viewers okay um, in the hadith it mentions that uh, in the in the last days uh, and when you say the hadith are you referring to uh, just the general body of literature are there individual hadith there are several hadith uh, even uh, the Sunnis have their own and then the Shias have their own and there are several hadith be within these uh, bodies as well and um, it, typically they try not to contradict each other so um, so there are hadiths uh, written by several individuals uh, even about as far as uh, 1200 years ago and uh, we have hadiths that are more recent and so it all depends but they are agree about, upon this one scenario that okay. how the end time events will sh take place okay and they believe that at the end, Mahdi, who is, uh, Mahdi is actually um, uh, the, the uh, messianic figure in Islam. And he... How do you say it? Ma Mahdi. 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 And Mahdi uh, was, um, uh, he disappeared at a very young age. And Muslims can't tell you where he went. They believe that he's with, with God in heaven and that he will, he, he will come at the end as judge. He will come as judge, and when he uh, appears, it's the end of the world as we know it. And um, Jesus will come with him, but Jesus will be second in, 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 in rank. Uh, Jesus will serve Mahdi and his purpose. So they believe that Jesus will descend in Damascus when he comes, 
he will literally actually land in, there in that location. Is that where Ma Mahi comes, goes the, to? Um, yes, and they will come there. And um, it, it also says that G Mahdi will judge the world. He will be the one that has the preeminence. He will judge the world. Jesus will serve Mahdi and do his bidding. Uh, Jesus will, by a breath, kill Dajjal. Dajjal is the uh, Islamic Antichrist. With a breath, he will kill him. And uh, there's no, we do not know exactly who Dajjal is. Uh, his identity is a mystery. Uh, Jesus will kill 70,000 Jews only. And, um, and I'm not sure what that, why that number. Uh, even the Islamic scholars are, can't explain why, but it's 70,000. Jesus will also destroy all pigs, all swine on earth will be killed. There won't be one left. Uh, for some reason, um, Allah made the swine, but then I guess he has changed his mind and then they will be wiped out. And um, uh, Jesus will break all the crosses on earth. And as a result of all these actions, the people of the world at that time will all accept Islam as the only true religion. And this is at the end of the world, the wicked will be destroyed and, and they will go into everlasting fire and, and everybody that is saved will have a chance at that time. Many people will have a second chance at that time they will accept Islam and they will, they will, um, they will, have, um, uh, they will live on this earth. And, um, and then it says that Jesus will live for only 40 years and he will get married during that time, he will have children, and finally he will die and be buried in Medina. That's the end of Christ. Now what happens to him after that, I don't know if he goes to heaven or not, it's silent. But that is uh, a, a picture of the apocalypse according to the Hadith in Islam, Islamic tradition. Wow. How, how, what percentage of, of Muslims today do you think understand that basic scenario? Almost all of them. And really? It's, it's pretty much accepted in, across as And that's in different branches and mm -hmm. east, west, it's the same? Yeah. And in, in this view, is there, a, is there a final group of Muslims at the very end that are, you know, kind of like a remnant or a faithful group? It will be the ones that, that do the will of Allah, follow the will of Allah, and, or, and they obey the, uh, they fulfill the five pillars and they obey the Sharia law. And, um, and these will be, uh, especially those who have uh, died in the cause of Allah or killed themselves in the cause of Allah, they will for sure be part of the saved and they will have <laughs> 70 virgins. Wow. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at the book of Revelation. Okay. Well, you, you've described the, the Hadith view of the end times. And let's take a look at just briefly, I mean, there's so much to cover, but let's just... Uh, focus on a few of the highlights of what the book of Revelation says, which is a very different view. Yes, Revelation, absolutely. I mean, I've never heard really what you've just shared. And I've been reading my Bible for uh, almost 40 years and I give seminars on the book of Revelation. I've written books on the book of Revelation. Uh, White Horse Media teaches all kinds of programs on Revelation and that scenario is something I've never, I've never mm -hmm. uh, really heard and I haven't read it here. That's for sure. Now, Revelation twelve seventeen is uh, definitely an apocalyptic verse, which says that the dragon, which represents the devil, the dragon was angry with the woman, which the woman represents God's people. And he went to make war with the remnant. The remnant is the final little bit, the final group, remnant of her seed which and then their characteristics are they keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm. So this verse describes where the battle lines are, mm. that uh, the devil is making war on a final remnant group of, of followers of Jesus who are commandment keepers. As, and as we've gone over the Ten Commandments in uh, the last couple of programs and we talked about the Seventh Day Sabbath, uh, Revelation pinpoints a final remnant who are doing that. That's right. They're Amen. keeping God's law. Amen. And they're following Jesus Christ. And uh, the battle is, is on concerning these people, the rage of the devil. And, you know, if any of us uh, were to take a stand, or if we do take a stand for Jesus 
And for all the Ten Commandments, we want to put God first, no idols, don't take his name in vain, keep the seventh day Sabbath holy, honor our parents, don't murder, don't hate, uh, don't commit adultery, we're sexually pure, we don't uh, steal, we don't lie, we don't covet, we love God with all of our hearts, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. I mean, that is, uh, is a declaration of war yes. to the devil. That's right. The devil's, uh, he hates those kind of people yeah. because he's a commandment breaker. He was the first commandment breaker. And he hates Jesus. He hates Jesus. Now let's go to Revelation 14 because chapter 14, and we don't obviously have time to go into all these details, but we'll just introduce this topic. Uh, Revelation 14 verses 6 to 12 describes three angels flying in the sky. And these angels are symbolic of people, of this remnant people who, who uh, give these messages to the world. The first angel in verse 6, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel, which is the good news of Jesus, that Jesus uh, was born of a virgin by the Holy Spirit, he grew up, he lived a holy life, he never sinned, no violence, showed the infinite love of God to all people, to uh, Jews and Samaritans and Romans and tax collectors and the poor and the rich, everybody. And then at the end of his life, he, he made the big decision to take the sin of humanity upon himself in fulfillment of Isaiah 53, that prophecy that, that the Lord would lay on him the sin of us all. And then he uh, suffered in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went through a whole series of trials. He was beaten, he was whipped. He was crowned with a crown of thorns. And finally, he was lifted up on a cross. Mm. And as we uh, talked about this, the evidence from scripture is that he really did die. Mm. He said, it is finished. Mm. And he died and he was buried in that dark tomb. And all the evidence and the eyewitness accounts is that he really did rise from the dead Amen. and went to heaven. And that's the good news, Amen. the good news uh, for all of us. Amen. Good news for Muslims, good That's news right. for uh, Christians, good news for atheists, good news for agnostics and everybody else. And anyway, uh, he, the first angel has the gospel to preach to those who dwell upon the earth to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people all around the world. And then in verse 7, he announces that we're living in a judgment time. Uh, Fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And then he calls upon us to worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters, which is a call to uh, worship the Creator, which ultimately is a call to keep the Sabbath. Right. As we talked about the fourth commandment, uh, in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it, and he rested on the seventh day. So there's a call to accept the gospel, a call to realize we're in a judgment time, and a call to keep the Sabbath. And then the second angel in verse eight warns about Babylon falling. Uh, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, because she made all the nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. There's global deception all around the world. This uh, mysterious uh, apostate organization called Babylon. And then in verses 9 to 11, there's a warning about the beast and his image and getting his mark, the mark of the beast, which is the final apocalyptic test at the end of time, where everybody has to make a decision, whose side are we on? And then there's a warning of judgment that comes upon those who get the mark in verse 10 and 11. And then verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, which is the same people that are described in Revelation 12 verse, verse 17. Amen. The remnant people. That's right. So the remnant is described at the end of chapter 12 and in chapter 14, we have the same people giving these messages uh, all over the world. Amazing. Just powerful. And uh, Shabazz, if you really look at the landscape of the world's religions, how many movements are there in this world that are keeping all ten of the commandments, including the Sabbath, and that are teaching from the Bible, from Revelation, these three angels' messages to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people all over the world. How um, many are doing that? None except the Seventh day Adventists. You're sure? I am positive. I am positive. For more than 30 years I've studied it. And all I know is the Adventists are doing this. 
So you were you were part of Islam. You grew up in Iran, yeah. and uh, God worked in your life as you've told your story, and you made a decision to uh, to try Jesus. That's right. And He came in and He changed your life. Yes, and He, he gave you peace. Yes, and He showed you the power of His Word. Yes, He did. And then He gave you a dream. Amen. That uh, the Seventh Day Adventist Church did did He give you a dream that the Sabbath was the right day, or that the Seventh Day Adventist Church was the right movement, or both? Both. 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 And I was shown the Seventh-day Adventist Church and also the importance of the Sabbath was shown to me that both are essential. And this, this came in a, in a dream or a vision in a, or in both? In a dream. This was a dream, actually. One dream or more than one, one dream? One dream that I had asked for and God gave me that dream. And, and, and you, I mean, you're sure that it was the Seventh-day Adventist Absolutely. Church? Absolutely. I even saw the name of the church, Seventh-day Adventist. Wow. And, uh, it was exact. I mean, and it was, it was the. It was exactly the church that I was baptized in, in my dream. Wow. That that I saw, and uh, it was amazing. And and that day was brighter. It was the Sabbath, and it was brighter than any other day of the week. And the brightness wasn't this just like the overwhelming light of the sun. There was a hallowed brightness <laughs> upon the day, that uh, I understood that this is a special day. Wow. Yeah, and uh, uh, no other day is like it. Yeah, there was uh, many years ago, I, I was searching. I visited a, a Baptist church. I visited a Methodist church. I went to um, some churches in my area. And then as I began to search, one day I turned on the television set and I saw a minister whose name was George Vandeman mm -hmm. with a TV program called It Is Written. Yeah. And he was standing there with an open Bible and he smiled at me and, and he started talking about the Seventh-day Sabbath. And I was gripped by his, uh, his talk. And then he held up a little book called The Day to Remember. And he looked right at me and he said, call me up, friend, and I'll send you a free copy of this book. And then there was an 800 number that came on the screen. I felt this impression, go to the phone, call that man. I called him or called uh, one of the people that answered the phone. And within a short time, that book came into our mailbox uh, in Studio City, California. I read that book, was convicted about the Ten Commandments. And then at the end of the book, it said, come visit a Seventh-day Adventist church sometime and say hello. <laughs> So I f actually found an Adventist in a health food store and he brought me to church. And then, uh, you know, I've been going there for almost 40 years. Praise and the reason is because I see it in the Bible and God led me just like he led you. He didn't give me a dream or a vision, but he showed me in his word that he does have an apocalyptic end time people. Uh, they're not a perfect people that, you know, we, uh, all of us make mistakes, but there are people that are uh, fulfilling the prophecy Mm. the prophecy of a commandment-keeping end-time people, calling people out of Babylon, warning about the beast and the mark, and calling people to keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and this happens right before verse 14, which says, uh, after the three angels, it says, I looked and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And this is a picture of the glorious uh, second coming Amen. of Jesus Christ, the same one who, who lived, who suffered, who died, who rose, who went up, and who's coming back. And he uh, has the preeminence. Yeah, and in Islam, you know, they do believe he's coming back, but as you said, he's going to be a servant. That's right. But not, not in this book. No. He's not a servant. He's coming back as, as the judge, as the king of kings, as the lord of lords, with the sharp sickle to reap the final harvest Amen. and to, to separate uh, you know, the world into two groups, those who are following him and those who aren't. Amen. Now, now tell us about some of your experiences in Turkey. Well, uh, you, you shared some of that with me and I think it's worth sharing now. Yes, I'll, I would love to do that. And I, want, I would love for my friends, whoever they are that are watching this program right now or listening, that they, they would take courage in, in, with the stories I'm about to share. Because I, I, when I uh, served in Turkey, I... I had, a, I had the privilege of, of uh, working there for a while and, and the day that I arrived there in where I was serving, um, several Muslim families had requested to meet with me because they had heard that I'm coming. And uh, so we went to this location that we met. There were uh, at least four people. There, was, there were three men and one lady that came to meet with me. And they basically looked at me in the eye and they said, look, we represent several uh, Afghan 
clans. Basically, the Afghan system works on clan system and the families are clans and all that. And, and he said that we have been uh, searching the scriptures and talk to Christians, but we want to know, you Adventists, if you drink alcohol, if you eat pork, if you're not faithful to the things you are teaching, we're not going to even look back. We're just leaving. You have to promise us that it's not going to be like that. And I said, look, you're in the right place. We do not drink alcohol. We are against that. We teach against that. We, we do not even smoke. In our church, we, we are against smoking. No pork, no, no drink, pork, no None smoke. of that. And uh, after that, <clears throat> these beautiful people who were in church every Sabbath, and we had, the, we had Bible studies with them, and I studied with all of them in their homes and in church, and they came faithfully. And I had the privilege of baptizing 17 of them in my bathtub. And, um, in your house? In my home. In Turkey? That I was renting. Wow. And... Um, and how they fit in the bathtub? <laughs> Not all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> one by one. <laughs> one by one. It, it, wow. it was a long how many process. people were there? Uh, well, we had maybe thirty people there. They were crowded into they, the bathroom. Uh, that, that, as much as they could, <laughs> as much as they could, and one by one, uh, I baptized them, and, and it was the most uh, blessed m moment of my life. Wow. And um, these these people pay the price. This this uh, these th three of these men that were the patriarchs of these families, they went to a gathering of 600 Muslim uh, Afghans and there they, they accused them that you are going to Christian church, you are, uh, you are apostates and all that and they stood firmly for their faith and they boldly witnessed for Christ to these people. Not one person approached them, not one person laid hands on them. And they said after we finished talking, we walked away. As we walked away, the crowd was around us. And as we walked away, the crowd just pushed back. And there was this opening, like, like, the, like the Red Sea, when God opened the Red Sea. Mm. They could just walk right through these people. Not a single person was able to touch them. One of their men, uh, their wife, later on, some weeks later, was attacked in the street. But she came faithfully to church with swollen eye and, and, and blue and purple, and she just praised God. She said, see, brother, we are in danger, but that's okay. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep coming. And, and I want to, uh, if it's okay, yes. make a plea with the yeah, viewers. And, and I want to say, yeah. brother, sister, whoever you are, wherever you are, I don't know where you are watching this program right now. I didn't become a Christian simply because there was something in it for me. I became a Christian because God told me this is the way of life. And I was seeking to find life, and I was seeking to find truth. And I found it in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He is my Lord. He is my sa Savior. He's, uh, he has given me salvation. I have salvation in Him. And I want to plead with you. I know some of you are probably where I was when I was first ser searching and seeking. Some of you may have never even thought about what we have told you in these programs. And this may be a spark in your life. And some of you may have even be, may right now be in, in, in uh, experiencing persecution, but I want to encourage you wherever you are, no matter what your experience is, Christ is your shield. Jesus is your salvation. He has promised that He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He has promised that He will guide you, that He will lead you with His own eyes. He will lead you and He will give you life. He will give you life eternal. One day you will see Him. You will see His face. And all your sufferings would have been worth, worth it all. And you will say, heaven is cheap enough that I could be in heaven because of what Jesus has done for me. I want to encourage you that you can take courage and God will save you. God will give you grace. And He will, through you, save your family, save your friends, your loved ones. And He will do a mighty work with you. He loves you. You are pr more precious to Him than, than the entire universe. Mm. He knows you by name and He has etched your name in the palm of His hand. And today, He wants to bring you into a nearer and deeper relationship with Himself and He will give you peace. No man can take that peace from you. God bless you, whoever you are. And I will be praying for you. I don't know you myself and Pastor Steve will be praying for you throughout the coming days. And we also want you to know that 
there are resources available. If you want to learn more, uh, Shabazz's book, Two Sacrifices, One Destiny, tells his story. Uh, you can get this from White Horse Media. And we also are preparing a list of resources of, uh, of Bible guides, Bible studies that have been prepared just for you. Uh, these are available for Muslims. And they're in English and different languages, uh, Arabic, Farsi, and Turkish. So if you just contact White, White Horse Media and ask for a list of resources, we'll, we'll give this to you for free and point you in different directions of where to find this material. And so this, this uh, you know, will be a step in a journey. And uh, we're, we're, we haven't arrived yet. We're not at the end of the journey, but we're on the road. And we've learned. You've learned and I've learned. Your background is very different than mine. But we've come together and we've learned the power the power of this book, Amen. the power of the book of Revelation, the power of the word of God and the power of Jesus, that Jesus Christ is powerful and the power of God's love. We've learned about love. And, and as we read our Bibles, uh, Revelation talks about a final people who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. And as we've looked at in past programs, God's 10 commandment law is summarized in, in love, love to God and love to our neighbor as ourselves and it's really you know what what god is looking for is for a final people to reveal his love through the the love of god that is expressed in the most uh, incomprehensible event where uh, jesus came down from heaven and was willing to be lifted up on a cross on a cruel wicked roman splintery cross mm. for you and for me and there's really no, nothing like it. There's no, there's no other religion, there's no other story that compares. The Bible's the world's best-selling book. Jesus is the world's most famous person. The resurrection is the most uh, well-documented event of all of history. And Jesus appeals, he appeals to you and he appeals to me. In Revelation 3, verse 20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Jesus invites us to open the door of our hearts and let him come in. And Shabazz and I, and I can testify that if you give him a try, if you open your heart and say, Jesus, I need you, come into my life. You'll never be sorry. He will come in. He'll give you power and love and forgiveness and strength and grace and everything you need. And you will live forever and ever and ever with him in a brand new world. You'll never be sorry if you make that choice. We hope you enjoyed watching Good News for Muslims with Steve Wolberg and Shabazz. This entire 13-part series is now available on DVD. To order from within the U.S., call White Horse Media at 1-800-782-4253. To watch the series online or for more information, visit the website www.goodnewsformuslims.com.